And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome again to a Freelance Teacher Podcast video cast. I hope the sound is okay here in the studio. I don't have my earphones in, and uh, my better half is out in the store getting stuff, so I figured I'd take this chance because you guys keep bugging me and bothering me, justifiably, I might add, that it's been long due for a video cast. And uh, okay, great. Well, let me explain to you what happened. We were in Peru for a week. Uh, one of my side hustles, uh, TFT Travel Group. We were in Peru, and it was fantastic. And as when you travel, you learn things. And this is where the educational part of this comes in, because you know the stuff that we talk about in the United States a lot. And and I have to qualify that because I'm in academia, eh, quote unquote, put an asterisk next to that, but academia, mainstream media, these kinds of things, the things that are spoken of, when you go overseas, they're never spoken of. And what do I mean? Well, you know, you come to the United States and you hear things again. I have to I have to speak from my perspective. It's basically, not exclusively, but basically America is a fundamentally racist country. That's Greg Popovich, the coach of the San Antonio Spurs. That's a major media person. That's a huge someone with a massive following. The NBA is gigantic. And they're a successful team. This is not some nobody. This is stuff you hear. Academia says it all the time. I don't need to explain to you what's being talked about on the campus. I've told you personally what's going on on the campus. And all you need to do is walk onto a college campus or take a look at campus life online or go to the college websites and look at the classes being offered. What do you hear? Basically, you hear that everything that the United States of America, these United States, as it should be spoken of, is bad. Everything is terrible. You hear a lot about race. You hear a lot about gender and a lot about class. You also hear a lot of anti-capitalist rhetoric, things like that. Well, all right, I'll let me, you want, okay, I'll teach you something else. We were in Peru and the majority of our group was Hispanic. We had a bunch of Mexican people with us. We had uh, Mexican descent. We had a bunch of a, a, a large portion of our group was Ecuadorian. Um, it was a majority uh, Hispanic. Practically everybody had at least a working knowledge of Spanish. Not everybody, but it was it was it was viable. And I was speaking to some of the older Mexican women because there was a guy who was selling hats and sunglasses and things we went on this boat and we saw the natural wildlife in the middle of this gigantic lake bay area i mean huge huge water uh, body of water and there are these isolated islands in the middle of it where they harvest guano which is bird poop because they have so many natural birds and they've got also sea lions and seals and it's it's a, a wildlife uh, 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 just amazing. It, it, it was kind of called the poor man's Galapagos because they had unique wildlife there, but without the cost of flying 600 miles off the coast to Galapagos, where we are planning on going soon. Don't let that one out. So this old guy, disabled, uh, in the old days, in the bad old days, they would say he was crippled. Um... And that was the old lady's word because I asked why she was buying hats and sunglasses from this guy because you know they got you by the throat it's right before you're getting on the boat if you don't have a hat if you don't have sunglasses what are you gonna do the birds can poop on you I got pooped on I'll bet you that makes some of my enemies happy but I took some bird poop on the pants and my hat and stuff like that and my jacket um, and also it's very bright you know it's the middle of the day it's sunny you're in South America, a couple hundred miles south of the equator. You know, it's serious. So the guy's got you by the neck, right? What are you going to do? You're not going to buy it. You're going to suffer. So I said, you know, you know, you're getting, you know, maybe swindled a little bit. And this older Mexican woman, one of our clients said, I, I feel sorry for them, right? I feel sorry for some of these people. She said, you know, we have it nice. And her exact words, thanks God for America. Now I want you to think about this. Right? This is a Mexican woman, came to the United States. 
Her husband started a landscaping company and she now runs it. The husband is, is no longer alive. And she runs this company. Strong woman. Had a bunch of kids. Um, runs a landscaping company. Speaks with a thick Spanish accent. Mexican woman. I'd be shocked uh, if she graduated from high school. I know that sounds strange to say, but I, uh, we were talking, my wife and I were talking about this, and and, and I don't mean uneducated, right? Because everyone's like, oh, what do you mean? Didn't finish high school. Eh. I didn't say not smart. I said unschooled. She's very educated, right? Does not mean she's uneducated. This woman can hold her own. She's bilingual. She runs a company with multiple employees. The majority of them, I would assume, are men. It's a landscaping company. She's got to boss them around. And she was thrust into the role of boss by her husband's death, un untimely death. And she is grateful for America. Now, you guys know me. I'm not putting on the flag shirt and waving the American flag and America, love it or leave it. That's not me at all. I'm, I'm not, definitely not that way. But people confuse American government with American population and what the government does and who it is versus who the people are. They're totally not the same thing. And think about this short, pudgy Mexican woman. She loves the United States. You start telling her that, the, that America is a fundamentally flawed place and just wall-to-wall -wall racists and bigots and misogynists and it's terrible and capitalism is awful. Capitalism is awful? She runs a business. Without capitalism, she's not running a business. Really, a four foot nine Mexican woman immigrant in a socialist paradise running a business? Have you seen what's been going on in Venezuela? It doesn't work that way. But here it does. Here she has that chance. And you start slinging that cock and bull that they hand out on the campus to her? Now, she's a nice person, right? She's going to say, oh, no, I think you're wrong. You know, America is great. Here's this opportunity. And you know why? Because the, the word that everybody always forgets, perspective. She has perspective. Come down to Peru with us. Or even better, forget that because that would put money in my dirty capitalist pocket. Go to Mexico with her. She and her sister are building a building there where they're going to help children they're going to help their community in Mexico, which is very depressed and struggling. And because they have the means from what they do here in the States, they are going down to Mexico. And these people exist. These are good people. They're going down to Mexico and they are helping out. They are building a building. And from what I could understand, because it was part of a much larger conversation, the entire top of the building is going to be for children to live either permanently or temporarily and they'll provide services for the children of their hometown. They're not moving back. They're staying here and they manage the project and they visit periodically and they go down all of that. But they, they're, they're grateful for what they have and it really is about perspective. And that's what I've been finding out and when I start talking with uh, um, my podcast partner, we we're really dragging our feet on this. And she's much smarter than I am and, and is a much better speaker than I am uh, and more, way more erudite on these matters. But this idea of perspective and what it means to be a citizen and understanding the world around you and civics, you know, when we talk about these kinds of things, that word perspective will come up a lot because anybody who's not from the United States and came here for a reason, I'm talking about my mother-in-law, talking about these women, uh, they get it, but everyone who tells me that America is terrible and it's flawed, look, please don't be binary about this. Oh, you're saying America is great and it's all wonderful and we should just keep our heads down and shut up. No, of course not. But what I am saying is, A, you're confusing government with people. The second thing is, your perspective is off. Everybody who tells me that America is awful is telling me from a very expensive laptop and they've got a nice car in the driveway and they can afford to support their multiple children. Just like everybody who tells me about global warming flies a private jet 
All these Hollywood people tell me about this stuff and they've got jets and cars and gigantic houses and stuff like that. So here comes the uh, shopping crew here. So I got to go. But perspective is where it's at. Keep your perspective. Stay in touch with the real world. And I'll talk to you soon because here they are.